Hey there guys, alright, today we are back with some overly sarcastic productions. I can't remember the last time I said this, but we're watching a miscellaneous myths. What was the last miscellaneous myth? I don't remember. We did a couple legends summarized, quite a few uh, trope talks. But anyways, we're here with Hippolytus. Hippolytus? Hippolytus. I think it's Hippolytus. We'll find out. Red will probably say it correctly. Uh, before we dive in, make sure you go and check out the links in the description box below. I would love it if you joined the Discord and followed me over at Twitch. Now, this is a short episode. Um, I don't know if I'm going to watch the... Uh, there's another one. I think... Was it the Icarus video? Uh, there was one miscellaneous myth that's like just barely over a minute long. I don't think I'm going to watch that one. That one might be too short. This one is pushing on being too short as well because it's just two minutes. But hopefully I can find something to ramble about. Let's go ahead and just dive right in. To say that Artemis and Aphrodite don't always get along would be something of an understatement. And it's hardly surprising from an analytical standpoint, they're symbolically antithetical to each other, one representing love, sex, and beauty, the other virginity and badassitude. But beyond their- <laughs> Virginity and badassitude is- They're intertwined! I knew I'm badass- I know what? Oh, am I not good enough for you? Natural rivalry with each other. Aphrodite has specifically never been too keen on Artemis' hunters, mostly because of the whole no relationships thing. It's one thing for Artemis to be naturally contradictory to Aphrodite, but it's another thing entirely for mortals to choose Artemis over Aphrodite. And considering that this is a goddess who took the mere existence of a pretty girl personally, Aphrodite has an unsurprising tendency to be very petty when it comes to- Aphrodite Petty? No way. The Hunters of Artemis. Like Hippolytus, for instance. Never heard of him? That's not too surprising. He's not a big name hero like his father Theseus, or just a big name like his mother Hippolyta. Now Hippolytus is devoted- Huh. Normally I just get girls. Is that a problem? No. Just culturally interesting. He himself to Artemis, choosing a life of hunting and no girlfriend over no hunting and yes girlfriend. This offends <laughs> Aphrodite- How dare. Seriously, no boyfriend either? Nah, who has the time? Ha. I feel that. On principle, who reacts with about as much restraint as we've come to expect from her, and she resolves to ruin his life for having the audacity to not be into girls. So Aphrodite's flawless plan progresses thusly. First, she uses her Phaedra, Hippolytus' stepmother, goddess magic to make Hippolytus' stepmom Phaedra fall in love with him. This makes Oh no. So I've just read this really fun Oedipus play. Oh no. Phaedra totally lovesick, and she tries to get Hippolytus to sleep with her, which he soundly refuses to do, because and also well I agree with that last one, Red. What? Oh, dear, I need you to kill your son. What? Did he do something? Uh, sure. Well, Phaedra doesn't take this very well, so she- <laughs> No, Red. Red. Butt exercise. What the fuck? Goes to Theseus and tells him that Hippolytus, um, forced himself on her. In some versions, she actually- That monster! He kills herself first, and her suicide note carries the accusation instead. Either way- th Father, I need you to kill my son for the crime of- Ah word. Oh crap, that's a crime now? I mean, uh, sure. Poseidon! Theseus is outraged and calls in a favor from his father Poseidon to have Hippolytus killed. Poseidon sends a sea monster to spook Hippolytus' horses, who subsequently drag him to his death. Now that oh. sucks. That... Well, that's... That's an ending. That came pretty fast. Obviously, but the story doesn't actually end here. See, oh. Hippolytus was lucky enough to get his very own historical cult. And as far as the cult's personal headcanon was concerned, no way in hell was... Oh, Hades, no. Is Artemis letting one of her hunters die for something so stupid? So Artemis calls in... Fix it! Okay, okay. ...a favor from Asclepius, the doctor so good he could resurrect the dead, and makes him... Ah! Hey! Nice! ...resurrect the dead, bringing Hippolytus back to life. Hooray! Woo! Now, in this version, he also moves to Latium and becomes a Roman god Verbius, because syncretism, and I think one line in the Iliad makes it seem like he actually married someone, which kind of feels like it subverts the whole premise of the story, really. Yeah. And here's to you. The big secret of the ancient Greek world is that cross-cultural syncretism was just the divine form of the witness protection program. Mrs. Robinson, you think Hippolytus had it bad? At least Aphrodite didn't make him fall in love with a bear. Huh? Who the fuck fell in love with a bear? I know this video is super short, but I refuse to apologize because that meant I could fully illustrate and soundtrack it in six hours, and that's crazy to me. Damn! This video tears- this would have taken me... Over a year. <laughs> All right, and that was Miscellaneous Myths Hippolytus. This, ooh, under five minutes. Do I ramble out about something here at the end? Nah. Uh, uh, good. Nah. Um, uh, yeah, that, this was a good episode. Nice and short. Nice, short, and sweet. 
Uh, didn't really need to be too much longer. I mean, could have added more stories, more different uh, interpretations of Hippolytus would have been cool, but it is what it is. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed. Remember to hit that like button and subscribe for more, and I will see you guys in the next video. Peace.